uh, I shuffled out your spread and surprisingly I'm not able to do the same method so I'm going to change my method for you guys and I just want to use more of a storytelling type of a method okay so let's just go back in time a little bit now I feel many of you have emerged from a situation that left you feeling very emotionally, um, you know, empowered, a lot stronger, and you learn a lot about yourself. And I feel like, you know, this is the past three years, the, that Saturn in Sagittarius energy. Um, and what did that do? It made you a lot more independent. You're able to do a lot of things on your own. And uh, it's made you kind of very resilient to the point where you're like, I don't really care what you think about me. I like me and I'm okay with that. And I feel like your your sense of social awkwardness, you don't care how people see you. And uh, you don't care how you relate to your body. You know, I, I feel like some of you might have been a little bit clumsy and you became less clumsy. And I know that sounds weird, but I feel like a lot of it has to do with just this inner sense of uh, calmness and confidence. And you're not constantly frazzled and energetically, um, you know, riled up by other people. You've been through a lot. And I'm not going to lie. I feel like you a lot, a lot, a lot. And so other people's opinions of you don't really matter. They kind of like, you know, uh, water on a duck's back. It just washes away. And um, I also feel when you're around someone who's really antsy and just, you know, worked up, you're not no longer affected by energy. So even if they do things with such an immense sense of urgency, you're going to start to do things at your own pace. You're going to start to, you know, dictate how things are getting done. So I do see what Saturn did for you was emotionally, honestly, it made you guys a lot less naive. You have a very happy-go-lucky way about you where you guys are really honest, you're very truthful, and in a way, you see the best in people. And Saturn knocks some sense into you, where it made you a lot more cautious about who you trust with your secrets, and who you can entrust with your time and your life. And so you guys became a lot more, you know, um, weary of people, but you're a lot less naive. And then on top of that, you're a lot less self-conscious, you're a lot more confident, and you're a lot more sure about what you want, okay? So it's a maturation process, and I know the past three years have not been easy, but in hindsight, you're looking back now and you're just like, I can't believe all of those things happened to me, and I can't believe I'm okay, I can't believe, you know, like, I, I feel many of you, you have this major um, resurgence in faith, in your faith. And faith could be spirituality or, you know, a religion that you prescribe to that you no longer practice. But I feel many of you are coming out of it. And you're just like, someone was up there protecting me. Otherwise, I would not have gotten through it. And I feel like in your darkest hours, too, you held on, you held it together, you really utilized, you know, your sense of humor, and that helped you get through, but all along, it was this sense of faith, okay, like, uh, faith that there is that light at the end of the tunnel, there is something out there that's better for you, and there is that sense of trusting that the universe um, didn't just put you through the situation f f without a reason, trusting that the universe is prepping you and strengthening you and fortifying you for something else that is much better. So that was, you know, the past three years. And let's talk about this present moment in time. I feel like many of you are in danger of shutting yourself off. I see you kind of going home, closing the blinds so that your neighbors don't look in. I see many of you, you know, spending your weekends, family is, it's, um, it's your haven, it's your refuge. They're people that you really, really trust. And so you feel at ease with them. But I'm, I see many of you spending your time alone. Okay, like doing whatever it is, but I feel like you're alone because you 
you love the peace and quiet. You love the stability and the predictability. And you love being able to let your guard down because you trust yourself, right? But there are things here that indicates to me isolation that might not be altogether good for you. I do see on the flip side of this, you have people that are just like, hey, do you want to grab lunch? Do you want to grab a movie? Do you want to catch up? Do you want to have, uh, you know, girls night, guys night? Do you want to hang out with us? Do you want to, you know, do certain things with us? And I feel like you're at a point where you're just like, if I like the activity, I'll do it. If I don't like the activity, I'm not going to do it. It's not so much about the activity. It's more about the social event. Being around other people. Um, needing to feel normal again. Needing to have a healthy social life. Needing to kind of like get out of your dragon's lair and see the sunshine. You know, needing to get more physically active. Needing to just, um, as a fire sign, needing to feel that joy of living, joy of life when you're around good people. So you're at a point, unfortunately, what Saturn did was it made you really skeptical and kind of um, bitter about people, especially people that have really, really frivolous complaints, you know, and the way that I uh, usually look at this is kind of like first world problems versus third world problems, you know, poverty, hunger, famine, things like that. And then you also have the first world problems. My iPhone's not working. My internet's out. You know, things like that. So, like, relatively, it, it's really difficult for you to relate to the people around you and their, what you perceive to be, quote-unquote, frivolous concerns. And so you, you kind of put yourself um, in this bubble, and you're keeping yourself very, very isolated because it's hard for you, ideologically, to connect to them, to understand, to relate, to emotionally feel like you're on their same level. And you guys are so honest that you don't fake it, right? If you're not feeling it, you're not going to sit there and nod your head and be like, oh, yeah, that's too bad. You don't do that. You, you're, you're not a fake sign. And so it's really hard for you to sit with people and have a conversation and be engaged if you don't like the topic, if you don't like the people, if you feel like you can't trust those people. And so you've been just out of, you know, um, as a defense mechanism, you've been keeping people at arm's length and picking and choosing what activity you will partake in. And honestly, you're looking for fun. So if the activity is fun, you do it. If not, you know, no matter who's there, they're not going to drag you out of bed. You're just not going to do it. But try your best to say yes. Say yes to all of them. Say yes to as many as you can. Say yes to um, reconnecting with a community of people. Working on your social skills. Allowing yourself to, you know, feel carefree again. Don't operate in this survival mode where we feel like everyone has hidden uh, agendas. Or for in some cases, feeling as if I've been through a lot, these people are too young, they don't really have anything to complain about, to gripe about. I find their grievances annoying. Yes, it's annoying, but they're not bad people, right? And remember a few years ago when you told yourself that you like to be around good people, honest, decent, hardworking, good people, you're getting your chance right now, and I feel like you're saying no to it, okay? So, um, make these connections, reconnect with people, say yes to these invitations, get yourself out, uh, open your blinds and greet the world, okay? You're, it, it's not good for you to keep your energy so contained. Being a fire sign, you need people. You need to be out. You need to do things. You need to, honestly, you just need it so that you're happy or not depressed. Um, I see some of you, it, it's not so much depression. It's just like you need to do more things, Okay. Um, physical activity, health issues. Um, health is looking really good. Your money situation, it's going really, really well. 
it's going tremendously well. So I don't see many of you struggling financially. You're in a really good space right now. You actually have a few projects that I feel you're dabbling in and ideas, you know, like uh, DIY projects, creative projects, money making side gigs. Those things are not really the problem. Um, how I, I do see um, health it's going well and you guys are really lucky you have a fast metabolism and you know you're generally like um, very carefree so I don't feel like you're a hypochondriac where you have shakes and shivers where you're you feel like cold all the time but I do feel it would be really good for you you know now that we are heading into spring in the uh, northern hemisphere the weather is nicer go out and soak up some sunshine okay um, get yourself more physically active. It's the right time to do that. I feel many of you might have been really, really blue during the winter season. There aren't a lot of people, aren't a lot of social activities, or just, you know, the overall gloomy, cold, kind of damp weather in the norm northern hemisphere that really got to you. And now the sun's out. You need to get out there and do more physical activity. Uh, I keep seeing people soliciting you, especially Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Uh, these are like, there are some romantic prospects in there too. And there are some serious, you know, really good people, really good friends. Uh, they're telling you, you know, step out of your shell, go to these events, go to these functions, uh, come over to their house, potlucks, and, you know, just a lot of social activities. I also see air signs, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. And I feel like they're coming at you a little strong and you're just like, you know, back off, you're a little bit too much. I don't know you that well. I don't know your intention. So you're kind of telling them stop. So you have the air signs, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, and you're kind of stopping them. Like you, you're holding your hands outstretched and you're just like, stop too much, too soon. I don't know you. Slow down. And um, the attention is flattering. But I also feel like many of you are playing hard to get to if it's too easy too soon too fast you kind of lose your interest a little bit so you're telling them to you know just like slow down buddy back off um that's fine just you know make time for people that want to be around you uh you're in a really good position where you can pick and choose actually so i would say you know um Options are definitely plentiful in friendships and in love and dating, okay? Uh, the home environment, I'm seeing here taking care of things and being in charge of your domain. Many of you are thinking about like getting new things added into the house, living things, plants, animals, like pets, okay? And I know they don't, they shouldn't be clumped into, you know, the same category they're very different with different sets of responsibilities but i feel like many of you are thinking heavily about you know do i want to have another child do i want a, a pet do i want more plants what do i want to do and i see beautification projects do, do it yourself um you might have children they're like coloring or painting and you're plastering their artwork all over the house you're doing some serious cleaning up and remodeling as well so I feel like a lot of attention, a lot of activity in the housing front to make things better. And uh, you're doing it very happily. And you're really taking control and having a really good rhythm with your space. I feel like a house that is very clean, is very well kept. It's very disciplined. Okay, so I don't see the house being super messy with pests and, and trash and garbage strewn about. I, I feel like you're taking really good care of your space, owning your space and claiming your space. Um, I'm also seeing as well, what we have here is, yes, you are making a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Like financially, things are going really well. But I'm also seeing some of you are thinking about your career. And I feel like there are opportunities out there. You're comparing yourself with other people with the same, you know, years of work experience as you in the same industry. And they're moving on to making more bucks, like bigger money, like bigger bigger higher position higher paying position and they're also saying like a bigger pot okay so they're they're getting promoted or they're shifting into a different agency a different sector where there is more um 
where there there is more financial security so what I'm seeing for some of you for example okay example if you are a healthcare practitioner like a um, nurse a doctor a healthcare provider um, this is what I'm seeing I see like a lot of people who are doing patient care and then you know your your coworkers are telling you well why don't you do administrative stuff instead the money is better the hours are better there's less strain less long shifts and uh, it's a lot more consistent it's a lot more stable and you can get jobs anywhere and so rather than being a nurse you know when you're working with uh, intake and in, in, in patient care you're shifting to become an administrator in a hospital in a medical facility as well so the job is you know um, different but I feel like the degree is transferable or your skills are transferable into more of an, an administrative role and the administrative role has more money more opportunities for growth better hours and I feel like some of you are really really thinking about long-term career so you're shifting and um, you're also I, I'm sensing, you know, like this is not just for those in the, the the healthcare profession. I see going from something that you're just like, I like it, but it's it's a little bit too emotionally up and down, unpredictable from one day to the next. Like the job itself, it's great, and you loved it at one point, but right now you're just like, I I don't know what else I want, but I I think I want more. I think I want a job that is stable from one day to the next. And then I also feel like what Saturn, that Saturn transit did for you guys is um, you wanted a, a job that was very dynamic in the past. You wanted, you know, um, things that, a job that's not state, that's not, un, that's not predictable. So you wanted something exciting and it would be changeable from one day to the next. It would be different from what all your friends or your family members are doing. That was appealing to you. And then with the whole Saturn transit, what happened was that now you've gotten a taste of that and you realize from one day to the next, if it's constantly unpredictable, yes, it's fun, but it's also emotionally such a roller coaster, right? So now I want stability. I want predictability. I want the boring job. I want something that has, you know, just a lot more stability stamped on it. And that's why you're shifting into more administrative things rather than uh, dealing with people, dealing with patients, dealing with cases where it's fun, but it's just a little bit too, uh, of a, too much of an emotional roller coaster. And at this point in your life, you're just like, I'm getting older. I think I'm okay with that roller coaster. And I also feel for many of you, after getting out of a significant relationship too, you're just like, I'm okay. I want stability. I don't want it to be too exciting. And I don't want that emotional roller coaster. I feel like many of you have been uh, or were in a relationship here. I feel um, we have here a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. I have a Virgo and I also have an Aquarius. Um, so Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, Virgo, Aquarius. Those might have been the past relationship partners that you've had and things were too turbulent too turbulent and you're not really missing that okay um the career situation there will be many many jobs on the offer for you so if you are thinking heavily about uh, a shift in your career i do see may coming in like it's coming in front and center so it's right around the corner for you guys I also feel as well um, really good jobs coming through like um, jobs that will offer you that stability okay so if you're trying to establish that um, work history I see things coming in in the month of May and then June um, and then I also feel like you know don't look at it as I'm gonna be doing it for the rest of my life I feel like you might do it for a few years possibly three years and then you know you have that um, management supervisory experience under your belt 
and then you can move on and find something else too. So it's not going to be that final destination. It's still, you're still trying to find things out, okay? So maybe after those three years, then you're going to be like, oh, that's a little bit exciting. It's a little bit stable, but it was kind of boring. Now I'm ready to go back to, you know, that uh, unpredictable job, that, that emotional roller coaster of a job. So I see a lot of, you know, back and forth here and there is nothing wrong with that. So don't tell yourself that that's abnormal to want these things and then to kind of um, go like go back on your words. OK, there's nothing wrong with what you're doing. If you want to take several years and to have like um, a change of pace in your work environment, that's fine. You're not doing anything irresponsible or reckless. And if you need that, that's totally fine. The only danger is, you know, other people uh, are in a specific situation and they hate their job, but they're, they're so fearful about leaving. You're being proactive and you're leaving before it gets stale. And you're leaving because you know you need something else. You need a change of scenery, whatever that might be, okay? Um, so... May, June, great, 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 great career moves, okay? Great career months. Um, the month of July, I also feel like you're getting some feedback as well, but I feel like they're saying they came belatedly. So I feel like you're going to be accepting something in May and June. And then the July time frame is when some of you might be undergoing some type of a training program or a job offer comes in and it's kind of like below expectation. So that's in the month of July. Um, in terms of, let me see, I keep seeing a lot of relationships here. Um, I keep seeing like, um, a sharing of assets, financial divvying up or like a, a split when it comes to assets. Um, I'm also sensing as well, you know, somebody is looking into your financial transactions. So it could be like an accountant, if you are hiring an accountant, and they're looking and they're just like, okay, where did you spend your money? What was your, it's also tax season. So I, I think that might be, you know, uh, the cause of it, somebody's looking into it. Um, and they're looking at your medical bills in particular, and they're trying to, you know, figure out like what's wrong with the medical bills. Are there uh, things that are past due? Why is there a past due amount? And so I see a lot of paperwork, a lot of back and forth, a lot of phone tag between you and possibly a medical uh, healthcare like provider that um, created the invoices or generated the invoices. And you're gonna have to go back and forth with them, digging through multiple invoices in order to resolve things. But I also see a specialist, like a poss possibly a tax preparer, look into your medical bills, look into your financial expenditures as well. Um, it is Mercury in retrograde. If you are filing um, any type of you know financial, um, packet if you're filing anything you need to look through it with a fine tooth comb okay you need to go through it uh, mercury retrograde is when we are really prone to being careless and not making mistakes oh, and, and making mistakes and i can't talk either so my apologies um we're very very careless and the people that do things for us, they're also very careless. So it's pertinent to look over documents very, very, very carefully before you submit. Now, I know Sagittarius, you guys are really impatient. If it takes you like nine hours to get something done, once it's done, you send it out, you never want to look at it again. You're done. You don't want to look at it. It will literally kill you to have to look at it and re proofread it and revise it. You need to revise it. Ask somebody if you're not able to do it, but you need to revise it. I can't stress enough. You have to do it. You just have to suck it up and do it, okay? I know it's not fun, but it's important because you don't want this to come back and bite you three months down the line, okay? Um, one last thing here. You know, there. you guys are like, at this point, I just feel like, You've been through some things and you're skeptical of people and you are also at a point where emotionally you're just a little bit jaded. You're just a little bit jaded. So that means um, you don't want to appear sensitive and needy 
and too emotionally available. You might have been taken advantage of in the past, and now you're um, approaching, you know, relationships and uh, social interaction with a jaded pair of eyes. Okay, so you're just like this person is too whiny, the other person is too um, picky, the other person is too pretentious. It's like you you have this laser like focus, and you're able to read people really well. Uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing for you, Sagittarius, because I feel like, yes, you have always been very perceptive, but I also feel, you know, the thing about you was um, you you love to be around people. You're understanding, and you know everyone can't be perfect, but you still accept them. But whatever you've been through in the past three years, it's made you feel really jaded. It's made you feel like, you know, almost like you don't want to be around people. And it's made you uh, cultivate this facade or this, you know, um, identity that you fear connection. And you don't want to appear like you're too emotionally available or emotionally needy. It's almost like telling people up front, I'm talking to you, but I don't need you. So don't you ever think that I need you because I don't need you. But then again, you do need that social interaction. So in a way, you do need the other person. So try to be a little bit more laid back, a little bit more easygoing. You don't have to show you're vulnerable. You don't have to show you're needy. You don't have to show, you know, um, anything that you're not. You just just try to relate and reconnect with other people, okay? Um, aside from that, they're saying here uh, competition, really strong competition. So I feel like there's something going on. Whether in your, like, if you guys are involved in competition, if you are kind of like comparing yourself with other people in the way that you look, like your body image, your performance at work, or everyone competing for jobs, okay? Um, I know it's, it's not a good place to be when we are under that much scrutiny and we feel like we have to do everything perfectly because we're being judged. But um, try to let that go, okay? You, you're you very confident in yourself, and that should be enough. You do not need to find that validation in your environment, okay? Try to let that go. I hope the reading is helpful for you guys. Um, I just feel like the energy is a little bit tense. And uh, I hope it will clear up. I hope it will clear up for you guys. Just uh, more than anything, reach out. Reconnect with people, okay?